In the earlier videos, the world of geology rests on maps, and maps require locations, and locations on the planet Earth are determined by lines of latitude and longitude, seen here. Around the middle of the spinning earth is the equator, 23 degrees north, the Tropic of Cancer, roughly, 23 degrees south, the Tropic of Capricorn. And you'll see numbers appearing on this globe as I move it around. There's a line there, that's the anti-meridian running down through the Pacific Ocean, the heavier vertical line running along this way, the equator running here. And then north of the equator, we have values going up to 90 degrees north and south to 90 degrees south. And uh, these values along the equator, you can see 70 east, 40 east, 60 east. These are east. They're east of this. The prime meridian, this line here is a prime meridian. And so that's... Uh, east of the prime meridian, and these are west of the prime meridian, um, these values here, and they run west this way. Technically, we are, there's a, there's a prime meridian appearing there. We're east of the prime meridian and north of the equator, so our location, there's the anti-meridian, our location is, well, that's the Tropic of Cancer, there we are. Just above the equator, not quite over to the anti-meridian at, at 180 degrees east. So that's our location, just shy of 160 east and below 10 north. But we're north of the equator, east of the prime meridian back there. And in the world of latitude and longitude and degrees, a one degree is quite large. We can see that, 157, 158. 159, spans all the way across uh, the island of Pompeii. So measuring one degree would be rather difficult because we'd be in the ocean to go from 157 to 158, 158 to 159. Uh, the same in going from 6 degrees north to 7 north, we'd have to have a boat. So we can't measure degrees. But if we drop down, you'll start to see another set of values appear. You'll see minutes appear. Here you can see 150, you know, 15 east, 15 minutes, 20, 25, 30. So we're starting at 158. We've got 158, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, 25. We can measure minutes, and that's what we'll do. We'll actually zoom in here on Colonia, and we can start to measure minutes. And we've been working in the metric system, measuring in centimeters, uh, measuring in meters, but the globe isn't measured in meters or centimeters. It's actually measured in degrees, and these, this little mark here is minutes, and the other mark is seconds. That uh, the the apostrophe is minutes, and the quote is seconds. So we'll work in minutes. It'll be simpler than going down into seconds. The whole way the globe is measured in distance are these units of degrees, arc minutes, and arc seconds. So it sounds like time, but it's not time. It's distance. Uh, an arc minute is a distance. The degrees are too big for us to do, and the seconds are rather small. So what we'll work with is uh, minutes and decimal minutes in a moment. And if we can measure it somewhere along the ground, a place that's east. I'm going to borrow this piece of road in here, running from the bank of FSM down towards the library, because as you can see, at that, along that stretch, the road is almost directly east. I want to go due east. This will make my life mathematically much easier. A, the longitude will increase as I go east. That'll make my line have a positive slope. And B, uh, 
I won't have to do any trigonometry. If I, if I don't go along a grid line, I'll have to do sines and cosines to try to calculate my distance. So it'll simplify it two ways. I could go straight north on a line, on a road that goes straight north, but uh, um, for this exercise, I'm going to go straight east. It's uh, It really is a little bit easier, but you, you could do it by going straight north and then you have measurements along Earth. They aren't quite the same. The Earth isn't the same distance around north to south as it is around the equator. And the lines of latitude get smaller as you get closer to the uh, north and south pole. So minutes change. But we'll, I'll borrow this east piece of road because it'll be simple. And that's what I'll be doing. I'll be starting down at the bank and heading down, heading east towards here, towards center point, along this road. And what I'll be trying to do is stay on this 158 line you see horizontally across my page, uh, across my image here. I'll be trying to stay on the 158, 12, uh, 158, sorry, the 6, where is it at? Got to go find someone. Yeah. Uh, it's north 6 degrees. Uh, we'll pick it up a little later. I don't have a... A good indicator. I don't have one here that shows me those yet. But we're six degrees north of the equator. Six fifty-seven there. On this particular line, as in six fifty-seven twenty at the bottom, six fifty-seven thirty-five at the top. We'll get those more accurately in a moment. I need an app that will read out latitude, longitude, and my distance in meters. You may have to find an app that works for your phone. I found the GPS Essentials is available to me in the Google Play Store, and it does everything I needed to do and more for this particular app. It'll give me latitude, longitude, and distance in meters. So I'll show you how that's set up. The first thing I had to do was configure my app to work in SI units. The screen will look a little strange because uh, the app is designed to run in portrait mode, not landscape mode. But here in the settings, I'm going down until I see the units. And under units, I want to work in meters. If I don't have meters, kilometers and meters would be a good choice. Your app may differ, but I can work in the SI meters unit. And then to get out of this uh, corrupted screen, I can go here and click on dashboard. Now, I can now add to the dashboard the elements that I do want. And the very first thing I want is latitude. And so I'll go down and get latitude. And then I'll long click and drag and drop and put that in a convenient location. And this one I'll tap on the next cell over and add longitude. That'll tell me my longitude. And in this third cell I'm going to put, each app will be different what they call this next one. Uh, you might think you want distance, but that's not what I want. I want distance covered. I want the distance traveled while the GPS is in the foreground of tracking. That's the one I want. And this has a nice feature that lets me include the location provider. How is it getting its location? I want the location to be GPS. This will let me know if it switched over to Wi-Fi, if it lost GPS signals. This, is, this lab is done outside, and so uh, your phone should automatically be using GPS as your location provider. But in case it's not, this will warn you that you're not. Wi-Fi is not as accurate as uh, GPS for providing latitude and longitude. You'll need it running in GPS mode. And you can't decide that. Your phone will. So as long as you're outside, it should be running under GPS. And you can see my north and east latitude. The distance covered can be reset at any time. Um, I go back to my dashboard, tap on it, and it can be reset. And I'll be using those in the uh, in the lab to work on the conversion factor between arc minutes of longitude and the distance covered in meters for that number of arc minutes. I'm looking for a piece of road that runs east-west. So, Nan Mile Road in front of the Bank of FSM will work. If my map isn't aligned right, I just tap on the north on the right side. With north being straight up, any horizontal road, like Ellen Yang here, running down from Pompey Campus to Fort T.Y. store, that will work. I'm going to go from the west to the east, 
and that will help me or give me my conversion factor of how many meters are in an arc minute. Um, if I'm not lined up east-west, then I'll have a trigonometry problem, and I want to avoid that. Here we see that the road in front of Pompey State Hospital is very close to east-west. That will also work for me to determine uh, the conversion factor. There are many different stretches of road around the island that you could probably use, and you certainly don't have to use a road, but roads are kind of handy because they have a clear view of the satellites overhead. So here's Kitchi's Circle Island Road near Panqua Kapar. Most of that is relatively east-west enough to be used for this particular ex laboratory experiment. And uh, that will work fairly well. There are other places it will work. Renchu and Roy, between the two, there's a nice, very directly east-west stretch of road. It's not very long, but if you shifted how many meters you went along it, you'd probably get really good readings off of that straight stretch. Here's a small piece of road in Madelineum that's east-west, just before Owa Protestant Church. You'd have to go down there. Now, you don't have to find a road that's east-west. The campus will work, but we can't use a road. We'd have to, well, we'll have to walk on the lawn to do this laboratory. We want to go straight east, and so when we're working off of a road, we'll have to use our GPS to stay oriented which way to walk. We'll be walking from west to east, just the same as we would if we had a piece of road we can use. And you could do this on the Nampai Memorial uh, High School campus. You could probably do this at uh, Madelineum High School. You could probably find enough open space to actually simply walk from west to east and get the measurements that you needed. I'm now in front of the bank of FSM. That's my starting location. And I'm now walking east along the road. I've switched to compass mode in this particular app so that I can have an eye on the compass. You'll notice that the compass says I'm bearing a little bit south of east. But what I am also looking at is my latitude, 6 degrees, 57.501 minutes north. I want to stay as close to that line of latitude as I can. And so I'm now walking to the east, and about every 30 meters, roughly speaking, I'm doing some screen captures that you'll see. Now, you wouldn't have to do a screen capture. You could just write down the numbers every 30 meters. It's not exactly every 30 meters, because if you notice, my distance covered jumps. It doesn't go up evenly, smoothly. That's in the nature of GPS uh, satellite location. Every time it pings the satellite, it updates its location. But it doesn't continuously ping the satellite systems or read the satellite data continuously. So there's small jumps. But... As best as I can, roughly speaking, every 30 min, every 30 meters, I'm writing down the latitude and longitude and distance covered, and I'll I'll show you the ones I've gotten in in a moment. But I'm still walking to the east at this point. I'm down now near. I'm actually past the public library at this point. I started at the bank of FSM, and I'm walking. And you're seeing what's happening on my screen as I walk. You'll notice I've corrected my path a little bit to the uh, no south of the east to get back onto the course there. But I'm basically walking east, and that was my goal all along, was to walk east. I'm now out near 139 meters, and I'll make it out to about 184 meters before I'll run out of space. I'll run into center point and won't be able to go any farther. And at, at 152, this is another place that I did a screen shot, capturing 156 meters. If you've been paying attention, my longitude keeps going up, but my latitude stays about the same. I'm walking on a line of latitude, and the longitude is rolling up. I started at 158, uh, 12, 490, if you will. 
and I'm at 12,587 now. I'm starting at 158, 12.490 east, and I'm now walking to the west. These are the screenshots I captured as I walked west. If you watch the longitude and distance covered, you'll see that my longitude increases and the distance covered increases. And this is the reason for walking east. They'll both go up. And the last screenshot will be at 12,587 east. Here's the data I recorded from those screenshots that you just saw. I'm looking at the east, and I'm going to subtract that 12,490 from each of the subsequent numbers. And so that I'm going to start off with east 00, zero and then I've subtracted 490 and gotten that point zero one eight. Watch out for that zero in the front. You'll see these numbers again, but you might want to take a look at this. I've done subtraction on the right column to get those values there that you see on the right side. I've subtracted the 490 from each of those values, 0.490. Add table. I'm going to use the uh, arc minutes. I'll go ahead and use A for the distance in arc minutes. And for the distance in meters, I'll go ahead and use D. I'll have to put a caption on my table at some point. First data point is zero, zero. That's uh, zero being east, 158, 12.490. But I only care about how far I've gone in meters. Uh, where I started from is arbitrary and has been subtracted off. 0 0.018 and 31.2 is 0 0.034 and... 59.1 One of the things I like to do is to simply do something for the first time and see what I get. I haven't actually entered this data. I just gathered it this evening. I haven't tried this app before in this way. And, uh, oh, See, I'm making a mistake already. These are distances in meters. Okay, that's right, that's right. One thing to be careful of on these arc minutes, notice I'm leading with that point zero. You have to be very careful. When you're working with the uh, GPS, it's measuring in thousands of a arc minute. That's its best accuracy, and that's true too for our handheld GPSs. Now, of course, you don't see anything here in the graph, even if I make it a, some other color just for fun. Um, I still only see the zero, zero point. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the monkey wrench. This should go from zero to, sorry, this is the x-axis. Um, this is the x-axis is going to be the arc minutes. That's a distance in arc minutes. But I'll leave it at arc minutes for now. It's a distance. But uh, here's what I want to adjust. It should run from at least zero, maybe. I'm going to get a bit fancy. I'm going to take, it's got to go from zero to 0 0.97. So I'll run it from negative zero, uh, negative 0 0.0097. I know that looks strange, but I've divided down by 10. I want to put the x-axis on just a little bit. It's probably easier just to put zero. And the maximum should be the 0 0.0097. Um, and I'll adjust that later. The y-axis label, that is a distance in meters. And this one, I'll, I'll simplify. I'll just go from 0 to, this goes up to 184. Let me go ahead and, 184. And with that done, well, that's somewhat rewarding. Came out a very nice straight line. I didn't know that uh, would happen. But the data knows what to do. 
and now I can find this being a line I can fit it with a best fit that tilde I need that tilde linear regression uh, the slope you could use any letter you want for the slope as long as it's not D or A you've already used those two letters um, M is often used for the slope K is sometimes in physical science for a constant this is a conversion factor I guess I'll go ahead and use M1 I like to use subscripts in case I have to reuse a letter that'll be mine uh, my uh, slope and I'll put a1 that's the X variable there and let's uh, maybe make it a contrasting color slightly so now you can see that I indeed I do have a line through the data and I've got right here this is my slope uh, that's 1859.07 I'm going to jot that down but I can copy that here obviously M1 is equal to 1859.07. So that's what I want to get at. And that's the number of meters per arc minute. So it tells me there's 1,859 meters in an arc minute. There's 60 arc minutes in a degree. So if I multiplied by 60, I'd get 1 degree. And it's 360 degrees all the way around the Earth. So if I multiply that number by 360, I get the total distance around the Earth. So this conversion factor not only converts between arc minutes and distance in meters, but it would actually provide me a way of measuring around the planet. So let's just for fun try that. There's 60 of these uh, in one minute. In fact, I can, I'm in Desmos, so I can simply say ABC. M1, I can do that directly. It's a nice feature of Desmos. So um, that's how big a degree is, 111,000 meters. And then there's 360 degrees in a circle. The Earth is actually 360 around, technically. Times 60 times that same M1 should get me how big around the Earth is. So I estimate a Earth radius where we're at here of about 40, 40 million meters, roughly, or about 40,155, uh, 56-some kilometers around the planet Earth. Um, those are meters, so I'm dividing by a 1,000. If I want, I can divide by a 1,000. That would be kilometers. I'm more likely to see circumference in kilometers. And here I've looked up the equatorial circumference of the Earth uh, on Google, equatorial circumference of Earth. And we're a little north of the equator, so we'll get a, we won't, we technically should get a slightly smaller number. But be that as it may, I've got that the equatorial circumference is 40,075 kilometers. And I said it was 40,156 kilometers. So that's uh, not too, too bad. 40,0075. So I've got a 40,075. Uh, 40,075 is the actual correct one. So I'm only off. I'm a little high, but not by much. I'm only, I'm up by about 81 kilometers. Let me turn that, 81 meters. 40,156 minus 40,075. 81 meters to the uh, uh, missed by 81 meters uh, less than a hundred meter da dash distance on a track and I can then knowing that I can now take my 4156 minus my 40075 and I, I can divide by that correct number and I can figure out by what percent I've exceeded it. And this is a little hard to read, but I'm less than 1% above. I mean, 0 0.01 would be 1%, and I'm 0 0.002 above the actual circumference of the Earth. So just by walking in front of the library here on Pompeii, I've managed to measure correctly 
the uh, circumference of the earth well it's within 81 meters but you know who's counting so uh, i've got a very very accurate result just from uh, just from uh, from these calculations again there are 60 minutes in one degree and 360 degrees all the way around the earth from negative 180 to positive 180 technically but that's the full distance around the earth and i've measured it quite accurately just by walking along the road in front of the library now i did this by walking due east and i'll be as i mentioned earlier and uh, that allowed me to come up with this result this one here that's the raw error that's your raw error. 81 meters is my raw error. And this, this is my percentage error. And this is excellent. Anything in, in a physical science lab, if we're within uh, uh, 5%, that's just an excellent result. If we're within 10%, that's a good result. And even 20% is moderately good agreement with the theory. I, we'd only start to wonder what happened if we got beyond 20%. Uh, so this is a, a very, very accurate result that we've obtained just by walking along a road in front of a library. Again, walking due east, uh, cardinal direction. Uh, that's a, that makes the mathematics easier. You could walk due west, but then the numbers would go down. And if you walk on any... Uh, other non-cardinal direction, you're going to have difficulties with um, having to do some trigonometry unless you walk north or south, but then you'd, well, you're having a different circumference to worry about. The Earth isn't quite the same that way, so it, it could, could be done that way. But that's really lab 7, another linear relationship that governs the connection between arcminutes and the distance in meters. Math at the heart of a physical science system yet again. And that, that's a core theme to the course. Math is underneath the systems we use. The GPSs on our smartphones that locate where we are are mathematically driven and can tell us very accurately where we are on the planet. So with that, uh, go ahead and if you can find a piece of somewhere you can walk east without falling off a cliff, wandering into traffic, or going into a creek or river, uh, but if you, you know, find somewhere you can go east and get some measurements, uh, you'll be able to pull off something like this yourself.